I'm so glad I don't have to walk this journey by myself. I'm so glad that I've got somebody to help me. I'm so glad. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm glad I've got some help with this struggle. Uh, I know we're in the Lord, but every now and then we, we go through some struggles. Every now and then we need some help. And we need it right away. I come to tell you today, I come to talk to you today about medicine for your struggles. Every now and then, every now and then, every now and then. We need some blessed assurance that the Lord is still with us. We need some blessed assurance that the Lord is still inside of us. We need some blessed assurance that the Lord will do what he says he will do in his word. It doesn't matter about the circumstances. It doesn't matter. And I, and I know some people, well, while, we are, while we are talking about problems and situations and circumstances, that's because we live in this body and this world is full of ups and downs. This world is full of ins and outs. You don't know. You could, you could be praising God and having a good time and just on the mountaintop one day. And by the time the evening come, you feel like you're in the valley because of circumstances and struggles that you've had to deal with. And I stopped by to tell you there's medicine for that. When people are struggling, they tend to, to look for a remedy. They, they tend to look for some type of therapy. Uh, they, they look for a cure. When we're struggling, perhaps we look for some type of treatment or some sort of antidote. We need an answer. We need a solution for our struggles. And we see that for many of us today, life is a struggle. Life is a constant battle. We are in relentless conflict. Every time you turn around, there's controversy. Everywhere, every day, and sometimes all day long. And we are truly, if you look around you, you look, look, listen at the news, you see what's going on all the time. We are truly living in shifty and distrustful times. And man has not realized that we need to, and, and, and let me just clarify this, the church, the body of Christ, the kingdom of God needs to get back on track with his, with our relationship with God the Father. We need to, as Christians, we need to allow the Holy Spirit that we say live on the inside of us. We need him. We need to allow him to do his work in us and through us. We need the Godhead operating in us and through us. I think in these scriptures, hopefully we'll see God the Father operating, God the Son operating, and God the Holy Spirit operating in us, through us, and around us. And so for many of us today, life is a struggle. We're living in shifty and distrustful times, and, and we can't trust the laws of the land. We can't put our confidence in government officials or state leaders. Sad to say, sad to say that spiritual leaders, spiritual leadership is failing in the kingdom of God. Because of three things that I can just name right away, or four things. It says spiritual leadership is failing in the kingdom of God. Because of disobedience, we just won't do what the word of God says do. We won't read it, so we think if we don't read it, we won't be held accountable. So we walk in disobedience. Another thing is sin. We don't hate what God hates. We embrace things that God, that's an abomination unto God. And so we're walking in disobedience, sin. And there's another thing that's really taken us down. And, 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 and it's really, uh, it's confusing everybody. And it's causing everybody to look just like the world. And that's compromise. We are compromised. So we're disobedient, walking in sin, and we're compromised. And, and, and so 
uh, uh, we're compromising and, and, and we're walking and we're living in a, 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 a society where there's watered down religion. We teach and preach stuff, but ain't no power in it. We acknowledge God having a form of godliness, doing all the right things, saying all the right things. When I say doing all the right things, I mean our traditions and practice. He's doing all, we, we, you know, we, we're going through the motion. We look good. We sound good. We have programs. And we have these programs timed, and we know exactly what time we're going to start and what time we're going to end. And doing that, we know what's going to be said at what point and what time. But we leave out the truth. We leave out deliverance. We leave out the power of God. We leave out relationship. We leave out talking about doing the will of God. We leave out having an intimate relationship with God to where he runs our life every day, all day long. And so I want to take you to John chapter 14 in the Amplified Bible. We've been here before, uh, 18 through 21. And I need you to understand that according to Jesus, you don't have to worry about your struggles any longer. You've been struggling. You don't have to worry about them. You don't have to worry about your ups and downs. Just understand that this body is going to do what it's supposed to do. And if it's in pain, things are going wrong. If things are going wrong, it's going to be in pain. Every now and then, you're going to have a bad attitude. Every now and then, you're going to get upset. That's what the natural, normal body does. That's what the carnal man does. That's what the flesh, that's how the flesh acts. So understand the flesh is going to act like the flesh is supposed to act. But we need to understand and remember the words of Jesus. Because he has medicine for our struggle. And I don't care where you are in life. I don't care how you feel. Jesus stopped by to tell you and me. He stopped by to tell us something. In the scripture, Jesus said, I will not leave you as orphans. And so you need to know right away that I don't care how you feel and what you're going through and what's happening to everybody around you. Jesus says, I will not leave you. Well, you say it, it looked like other folk, you know, it looked like he leaving other folks. Uh, well, you know. You, it, it's according to how you believe. What do you believe? I believe I should live and not die. Amen. I believe that no weapon formed against me Amen. shall prosper. Amen. I believe that I'm going to prosper in the name of Jesus. Amen. I believe that if I give, that he's going to give back to me, uh, pressed down, shaking together, running over. Somebody's going to give to me because he's going to tell them to do so. I believe that I'm the head and not the tail. I believe that he healeth all of these diseases. I believe that weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. I believe he will withhold no good thing from them that walk up right before him. I believe that he's going to take care of me. You better believe that you are his and he's yours and you all are wrapped up, tangled up and tied up in Christ Jesus. I believe that he can keep that. I believe that he is a, he can and he will and he has sustained me. I will not leave you as orphans. I, I, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. You don't have to worry about comforting. I'm going to comfort you in the midnight hour. I'm going to comfort you when you're hurting the worst. I'm going to comfort you when you're in pain. I'm going to comfort you when nobody understands what's going on. You don't have to worry about being desolate. You don't have to worry about being bereaved. I know you miss your loved ones and you miss friends, but I stopped by to tell you that Jesus is a friend that's sticking closer than any brother. And so you must understand that he, he's not going to forlong. He's not going to leave you for long. We're going to visit that in a few minutes. He's not going to leave you helpless. He says, I will come back to you. And at this point, he was talking to his disciples because he had not died yet. And he had not sent back the Holy Spirit. But how do you know Jesus has died? He's, been, he's, he's, he's risen again from the dead. He seated at God, the right hand of, of God the Father. And he has sent back on the day of Pentecost. He sent back the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit that resides, lives on the inside, abides on the inside of us. And so now we have a guide. We have what we need. We have a person. 
that's on the inside of us to lead and guide us. We have a person on the inside of us to help. Us. We have a person on the inside of us to protect us. We got a person on the inside of us that counsels us, that helps us, that's an advocate for us. We have a person living on the inside of us that know things to come. A person on the inside of us that can help us through anything that comes. A person on the inside of us that gets us ready for the next test and trial. A person on the inside of us that grabs us and helps us to move and maneuver through any struggle that's coming our way. A person that's on the, that's on the inside of us that that helps us through all the surprises and the mayhems of life. A person on the inside of us that keeps us from falling when we can't keep ourselves. We got some help. Yeah. He says, I will not for long. That means he's not going to neglect us. Anybody ever felt neglected? He's not going to allow us to be lonely. Anybody ever felt lonely? Bible says he says he's for long means that he's not going to forsake us. Forsake means that he's not going to abandon us or reject. I don't know about you, but but rejection is a powerful thing. And when you feel rejected and disowned and discarded. Cast off like waste. I don't know about you, but I know I served the Lord God, and I was glad when He said unto they said unto me, "Let's go into the house of the Lord." And you know, we just we just got we just finished singing the song. That God is a great God, and He's and He's worthy and greatly to be praised. And 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 we talk about the fact that 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 we get joy when we think about Him. And 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 you know what? I'm just so excited that I could sing this and that it's a part of my life and it's real. But I don't have to think too far back to where I felt like I was, not felt like, but I was rejected, disowned, cast aside. You, you ever done, you, you ever been in a situation where you know you did your best and you know God was pleased, but when it came to mankind or whoever was over you, the leader, whoever was in charge, they were displeased, and you just couldn't figure out why. Here you have you, you have given yourself, you have sacrificed. They don't know what you've been through, even just to get to church every every Sunday. Some Sundays you can't hardly get out of bed, but you go on in the name of Jesus. Some Sundays you don't know if your voice. Some Sundays you have to sing, and you have to you have to minister. You, you're doing sound, and you're ushering, or you're you're, you're leading prayer or you're in scriptures or you're teaching. You're doing whatever's necessary in the body of Christ. And you don't know if you're going to be able to get a word out when you open your mouth because you've had such a rocky night. And, and, and so when you, you, you break those, you, you come up and you break, you break the threshold and you come into the sanctuary and you're struggling. And instead of somebody asking how your day was and saying God is great and he's greatly to be praised, they want to know how come you late. They want to know why you look so bad. Just feel rejected, and you just want to go right on back out the door. But you know it wasn't them that died for you. Yeah. You, you, you know that that individual didn't save you. You know that individual is not the one that helps you to overcome in your finances. That individual that said that to you, and now you feel rejected, that's not the one that heals your body. That's not the one that you depend on. That's not your that's not the one who helps you to overcome. And that's not the one that talks to you. And that's with you in the midnight hour. When you're lonely, they are not there. When you're in pain, they are not there. <laughs> when you don't know which way to turn, you can't talk to them. Matter of fact, they'll have you going down the wrong road. And so you have to dismiss all that and don't and, and don't worry about how they approach you and what they say. Just understand that I've got some medicine for this for this struggle that I'm about to deal with or the one that I'm in right now. Yeah. 
That's one thing I like about the Lord. He, he always has a remedy. He always has an antidote. He has a solution to anything that might surprise us. It might be a surprise to you, but nothing surprises God. As a matter of fact, God knows it's coming. That's why he said, get in the word, get in the fellowship. Won't you read and study and practice because something is coming down the pipe. And if you're not ready, if you haven't walked with the footman, you're not going to be able to run with the horse. I don't know what this thing's doing. They, they're fooling around. They're getting ready. You got to be ready right now. You got to be ready for everything that comes up. You have to be ready. You got to tell the Lord, secure in me. You got to tell the Lord, work in me. I need you, oh God, to work in me to both do and will. I need to do your good pleasures and I need to be willing to do it. I need to have the right attitude. And then when my attitude is right and my thinking is right, I need you to give me the power and the preparation and the know-how to walk it out. And so he says just a little while now in verse 19, the world will not see me. The world not going to see me, Jesus said, anymore. But you will see me. Jesus says, you're going to see me because I live. And because I live, you will live also. Verse 20 says, at that time when that day comes, you will know for yourselves that I am in my Father. So the day has now come. If we know that Jesus is in the Father, we know that we received him as our personal Lord and Savior, ask him to come into our hearts and be lords of our life. We understand that he came in and we were not able to get saved and talk to the Father until we acknowledge Jesus Christ as the Son of God, as the one who died for our sins and the one who was raised again so that we can live in him. And so now he sits at the right hand of God the Father and every time we pray, we say, Father, we're talking to God. In the name of Jesus. I mean, you know that there's power in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, every tongue shall confess. In the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. In the name of Jesus, you don't have to worry about demons and goblets and ghosts. In the name of Jesus, everything got to flee and move. And so he says, you will know for yourself that I am in the Father and you are in me. And I am in you. Oh, my God. Let's look at that. He says, I'm in the Father. Jesus said, I'm in the Father. And then he says, and you are in me. So we're in Christ Jesus by way of being in the body of Christ, the church. And then he says, he turns around and says, I am in you. Really? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That's a trinity right there. He says, you're in the body of Christ, but I need you to understand the reason why you're in the body of Christ is because I'm in you. Because if I'm not in you, then you're not in the body of Christ. In order for you to be in the body of Christ, I have to be in you. And then I'm in you, and you're in me, and we're both in God the Father. Mm Are you serious? I've got that kind of power on the inside of me. Are you serious? Then why am I struggling? Oh, I know why. Because I'm still in this body. Still in this earth suit. Still weak. But Paul says, when I'm weak, I'm strong. He's talking about his spirit man. The Christ that lives on the inside of him is powerful and strong. Look what verse 21 says. Verse 21 says, the person who has my command. And keeps them. Those of us who have the word of God. 
and we keep the word of God by means of obeying. We obey the word. Man, you got to try the word. Practice the word. Just try it. If he said something, try it. If he said he'll do something, look for it. If he said not to do something, stop doing it. It's real easy. Try it. Look for it. Stop doing it. His word says it. Try it. He says, I'm going to give you so and so. And if you do so and so, look for it. He said, thou shall not stop doing it. Man, if you do that, you're in the 80 percent percentile right there of everything that God has for you. You're going to live a victorious life. And he says, what you got to do is you got to keep my commandments. And then he says, my commandments and keep them is one who really loves me. The person who has my commandments and keep them is the one who really loves me. So you want to know if somebody loves the Lord, see how they practice, see what they practice. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Just, just speak Jesus, talk Jesus, and and, and, and won't live nothing. Rather to, rather to fight at the drop of a hat. Bad attitude. And then he says, not only that, he said, they really love me. And then he says, look what he, he, he takes it a little bit further. He's progressive. He says, and whoever really loves me will be loved by my father. <laughs> And so Jesus said, I'm not looking at what you listen to what you say. He says, I'm watching what you do. He said, if you love me, I got some news for you. I got good news for you. When you love me, my father will love you. He mm -hmm. says, so love by my father. And then he says, and I too will love him. My Lord, so when we keep his commandments, we'll be loved by the father. And then Jesus said, I'm going to come and join in with the father. And me and the father are going to love you together. So we got the love of the Father and the love of the Son. Mm -hmm. And then he says, I will show, and I will show, reveal, manifest myself to him. I will let myself be clearly seen by him and make myself real to him. How is he going to do that? Oh, it's coming up in St. John chapter 16, verse 13 through 15. So look what this is. So, so Jesus said, my Father going to love you. If you keep my commandments, my Father's going to love you. It is important, Lord God, for us to do. Because you got to understand, all the commandments come from, it didn't come from Jesus, it came from God the Father. Jesus helps us to appropriate, to practice what the God the Father tells us we need to do. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, my Father going to love you. And Jesus said, you know, me and my Father, we're one. So if my Father God loves you, then I'm going to love you. And then not only that, he says, not only am I, my Father love you and I love you, then I got some, I'm going to put something in place whereby it's going to help you. Mm. Then so 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 what he's so so what he's saying what he's gonna put in place here I'm going to go now to John 16 because notice he says and I will show reveal my manifest myself to him so he's gonna manifest himself to us how I will let myself be clearly seen by him how I will make myself real to him how because he's sitting at God he's sitting at he's sitting at the right hand of God the Father so is he gonna really come down here. And show himself to us. He's going to make himself clear to us. Hey, we don't have to worry. Because over in John 16 verse 13. He says but when he. The spirit. Of truth. Oh now we understand. Because God the Holy Ghost. Now. Is going to do all of that stuff that Jesus just said. God the Holy Spirit. It's going to reveal himself. He's going to manifest himself. God, the Holy Spirit is going to let himself be clearly seen. God, the Holy Spirit is going to make himself real to us. He says, but when he, the spirit of truth, the true given spirit, talking about the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit comes, he will guide you into all the truth, the whole full truth. So you don't have to worry about your struggles because God, the Holy Spirit on the inside of you is going to lead and guide you into all truths. And I don't care what your struggles are. You can't separate the power of God from situations because God controls everything. He controls everything. I don't care if there's a medical situation. You don't have to worry about that. I don't care if there's a financial situation. I don't care if there's mental situation. I don't care what's going on in your life. 
you have to understand that the Holy Spirit on the inside of you is the spirit of truth. And he's going to guide you. He will guide you into all truth. So if you need to change your medicine, if you need to change doctors, if you need to change procedures, if you need to change your plans, if you need to change uh, what you do, if you need to change structure, if you need to change a vision, if you need to change anything that's concerning your life, the spirit of truth, the Holy Ghost on the inside of you will lead and guide you through those changes. What decision do you need to make right now? The Lord, the Spirit of God will lead and guide you. You think God, how is it that God can, can do all of these things spiritually, but then when it comes to your natural uh, well-being, that, that you, it's, it's all of a sudden that God don't know. He knows the doctors. He knows the medicine. He knows the procedure. He knows your body. He knows your pain. He knows your chemistry makeup. He knows your chemical makeup. He knows your mindset. He knows everything about you. He knows your breath. He knows your heartbeat. <laughs> he knows your temperature. He knows your heart rate. He knows your heart strength. He knows your heart weakness. He knows your kidneys. He knows your liver, your lungs, your brain, your throat, your esophagus, your, <laughs> your arteries your veins. He knows everything there is to know about you. He knows all the systems. He knows how your brain functions. He knows the different types of brains that's up on the inside of your head. He knows all of this stuff. He knows everything. So all you need to do is just make sure that the spirit of truth on the inside of you has free reign to guide and lead you. You don't know you no longer have to be led by your emotions. You don't longer have to be led by your feelings. You don't have to be led by popular opinion. You don't have to be led by popular polls. You don't have to be led by Hollywood. You don't have to be led by the East Coast or the West Coast. You don't have to be led by anything and anybody but by one person that lives on the inside of you, and that is the Holy Spirit. Aren't you glad he lives on the inside of you? I'm so glad I know him. I'm so glad that I not only know him, but he's on the inside of me. He lives on the inside of me. And so he will guide me into all truth, the whole, the full truth. And then it says, for he will not speak. He will not speak his own message on his own authority. The Holy Spirit on the inside of me is not going to speak foreign stuff that, 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 that doesn't come from, from, from God himself. Isn't that good? So he will not speak his own message on his own authority, but he will tell whatever he hears from the Father. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So you can, and that's why you got to read the word. That's why you have to understand what's going on on the inside of you. Because, oh, my God. Because what's on the inside of you is going to give you guidance and directions according to what he hears, not from somebody else, not from your own voice and mindset, but straight from God the Father, straight from the throne. The Holy Ghost is going to get it straight from the throne, from the mouth of God. He's going to speak to you what God says. Aren't you glad you got a thing with God? I'm so glad me and God is like that. I'm so glad God and I have a relationship. I'm so glad I know him. I'm so glad I can call him Abba Father. Which art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be glory to your name. Magnify your name. Worship you. You are of all praise, honor, and glory. I'm glad I know him. He will give, he, he said he will give the message that has been given to him and he will announce and declare to you the things that are to come that will happen in the future. I don't even have to worry about my future. I just need to make sure this fleshly mind of mine always thinks spiritual. I got to make sure I walk in the spirit. I have to make sure that I'm walking in the will of God because my spirit, man, the Holy Ghost on the inside of me knows the future. So what's going to happen? I shall live and not die. 
What's going to happen? This too shall pass. What's going to happen now to him that's able to do exceeding abundantly above all I can ask or think? According to the Holy Ghost that's on the inside of me. What's going to happen now? Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. What's going to happen? I'm Abraham's seed. The promise that he gave to Abraham, he's going to give it to me. What's going to happen? All things work together for the good. What's going to happen? Let me tell you what's going to happen. The word's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. The word going to happen. So get rid of that woe is me. When you're struggling, you get strength. When the butterfly goes into the cocoon, or should I say when the caterpillar goes into the cocoon, he must struggle. Because if he doesn't struggle when he it's time for him to go through the metamorphosis and he comes out to be transformed into a butterfly. If he has not gone through the struggle, he will not have the strength and his wings will be too weak and he will not be able to flap them and he will not be able to fly. And so his purpose in life will be dwarfed because he tried to get around and maneuver around the struggle. But you always have to remember that the calipula inside of the cocoon has the, he has the stuff working in him and with him to make it through. He has the strength for the struggle. He has the medicine for the struggle. There's a reason why he has the struggle. And you got to understand that all things work together for the good. It's to increase your faith because while the, while the while, while the caterpillar is inside the cocoon, he's telling himself, one day I'm going to fly. Yeah. It's tight in here, but I'm going to fly. Yeah. It's rough right now, but I'm going to fly. Yeah. I'm going, I'm growing through. I, I ain't going through. I'm growing through something right now, but I'm going to fly. Seed time and harvest. Spring is coming. Father, in the name of Jesus, my God, you're an awesome God. You have an awesome way of revealing yourself to us and reassuring us that you are all that we need. That in you we live and move and have our being. You have already set us up to be blessed. You set us up, Lord God, to soar like eagles. Set us up, Lord God, that we will run and not get weary, walk and not faint. You've set us up, Lord God, that we're trees planted by the rivers of water. And our leaves not going to fade. My God, we're going to produce fruit in our time. Lord, right now, even in the struggle, we're producing fruit. Because not only do we need you, everybody else that don't know you and those that are carnal minded and those that are weak and fleshly minded need you too. But they can't touch you and they can't see you like we can. So God, help us to overcome what we, what we grow through. Help us, Lord God, to maneuver through our spiritual cocoon so that the others can see that there is a God in heaven. And not only is he there, but he's also in mankind. So Lord God, we're not moved by what we see, not moved by how we feel. We're moved by the Holy Ghost that's on the inside of us. So, God, we thank you right now for everyone under the sound of my voice. Thank you for healing. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for the right mindset. Thank you for the right heart. Thank you, Lord God, for purpose and vision. Thank you, Lord God, for longevity. I thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that we shall live and not die. We praise you right now, Lord God, that all we have to do is stand on your word. Thank you for the faith that you give us, Lord God. Sometimes it's the size of a mustard seed. But all we need is a certain type of faith, not a certain size. Thank you for mustard seed faith. 
Because it, it is, it is, it is, it is the mustard seed that, that, that grows big, enormous. Thank you for that kind of thing. Now, Lord God, as we leave this mountain, I want to thank you. <laughs> I want to personally thank you, Lord God. That I know you and the power of your might. I want to thank you for the relationship that I have with you. I want to thank you for keeping me. I want to thank you for your strength. I want to thank you for your power. I want to thank you for carrying me. Thank you, Lord God, for helping me to stand in stooping times. I thank you. You've given me an answer to overcome every struggle. God, I thank you. I praise you. I'm glad that I know you. And the power of your resurrection. And I'm willing to keep on going through the fellowship of your suffering. That you may be pleased. And honored, not only in my life, but every life that we connect with. And now unto you, Lord God, is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless to the only wise God, be both majesty, dominion, power, honor, and glory. For now, both now. Why we live in this earth, in this world, both now and forever. When we leave here and go to, go to eternity. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.